So in our last video, we got up to the F statistic. And then the next question is, how do we know if it's significant? So when we were using a normal distribution, if we got a z-score that was larger than 1.96, we would say that was significant. So in this case, we have this F value. We need to know if that's significant. And the last thing we need is a distribution of that test statistic under the assumption that the null hypothesis is true. And we have two ways that we can get that distribution. One is by using simulation, and we would use randomization because we're doing a hypothesis test. And the other one is a distributional approximation. So there is a known distribution called the F distribution that we can use as well. But we're going to talk about both of these approaches, and I'm going to start with the simulation approach. So let's do a simulation with randomization. And that means we need to go to StatKey. So if you look at StatKey, there are the things that we did at the beginning of the semester, like the descriptive statistics and graphs. And then we have the main um, simulation methods we've been using, uh, bootstrap and randomization for kind of things like a single mean, um, a single proportion, a difference in means, a difference in proportions. We have our theoretical distributions, and we'll come back to this section. But right now, we're thinking about simulation, and we're going to look in this more advanced randomization tests area. So I'm going to go down to the more advanced randomization tests area, and I'm going to click on the ANOVA for difference in means example. And then this is an example that I found on the internet, so I need to um, upload a file for this data. So StatKey is going to do the same kinds of computations that you've seen before. I've got the sample size as 10 in the three groups. My means 5.0, 4.8, and 7 are all the same. I've got my standard deviations, and then it's got the overall numbers. And then what we're going to do when we generate one sample is we're going to randomize these different pain recordings to each of the different scenarios. So we're going to mix up the values of the labels so that there's no relationship between what group the person was in, quote unquote, because this is a simulation, and the pain that they reported. So in this case, uh, my means are 5.6, 5.8, 5.4, because I've just sort of randomly allocated the people to the three groups. So those means are going to be pretty similar. And then what StatKey has done is it's gone through and computed that F statistic. So for this randomization sample, it found the degrees of freedom, it found the sum of squares for the groups, the error, the total, it found the mean squares, and it found the F value. And it found an F value of 0 0.100. And so then that's one dot on the plot. And as always, I could click generate one sample, generate one sample, I could be lazy and click generate 100 samples, or I could be really lazy and click generate 1000 samples. And so if I do that, here is my randomization dot plot. This is a dot plot of what the world would look like if the null hypothesis were true. And then we can look at this plot and say, okay, how strange would it be to see something as large as we observed if the null were true. So the F value that we found was about five. So that would be pretty far out here. I would have a pretty small percentage of the distribution that would be as extreme or more extreme. But if I'm on stat key, I can actually just say I want to do a left tail, two tail, or right tail. Um, in the case of ANOVA, we're always gonna do a right tail. So I'm going to do a right tail, and then I'm going to put in my observed statistic, which was 5.020. And then it's going to tell me that my p-value is 0 0.013. So that's my p-value from randomization, where I didn't have to make any assumptions. So we're going to reject the null hypothesis because 0.013 is less than 0.05. We have evidence to suggest at least one of the means is different. So that's using the simulation approach. The other way that we could find the p-value here is we could use a distributional approximation. And in this case, we're going to use a distribution that's called the f-distribution. 
And it looks uh, like this. It looks similar to the one we just saw for our randomization distribution. So it's a distribution that's truncated at zero, and then it falls down in a long tail to the right. It's sort of like the T distribution. So if you remember the T distribution, we had to specify the degrees of freedom. The F distribution, it has two different parameters. It has a DF1, which is the degrees of freedom for the numerator. It's basically the degrees of freedom for the groups. And DF2, which is the degrees of freedom for the denominator of the F statistic. That's the degrees of freedom for the error. And because of the way the distribution is shaped, we always compute the p-value as the upper tail or the amount to the right. So we're never going to have a left tail. We're never going to have a two tail. It's always a right tail um, or an upper tail. Of course, if we're going to use a distributional approximation, there are conditions that we need to be true. One is the data needs to be normally distributed, which is really hard to check when you just have samples of the data. So the other thing is n needs to be large. We've seen n needs to be large in other inferential circumstances. In this case, it means that we need to check that each one of the n sub i's, the little sample sizes of the groups, is greater than or equal to 30. And the other one is the variability needs to be similar across the groups. Again, it's hard to really check that. So we have this rule of thumb where we take the largest standard deviation and we divide it by the smallest standard deviation. We want that number to be less than two. So now we have the complete full ANOVA table. So we've kind of been building it up throughout this entire lecture. We have uh, the degrees of freedom. That's a column. We have the sums of squares. And then we have the mean squares. We use the mean squares as a ratio to find our F statistic. And then we compute our P value by finding the upper tail of an F distribution with K minus one comma N minus K degrees of freedom. So the F distribution has two degrees of freedom, degrees of freedom one, which comes from the groups and degrees of freedom two, which comes from the error. And we're always gonna look for the F statistic in the upper tail of that F distribution. Let's go back to my music and pain relief example. And that equal variance condition is satisfied. And so we could find that by doing SD max divided by SD min. So my largest standard deviation is two and my, lar my smallest one is 1.23. And if I divide those, that is 1.63 and 1.63 is less than two so that equal variance condition is satisfied. But n sub 1 is equal to 10, n sub 2 is equal to 10, and n sub 3 is equal to 10, and 10 is less than 30. So that other condition is not satisfied. So we can only use a distributional approximation, the F distribution, if the data are normal. And it is really hard to tell from a sample if data are normally distributed. I usually look to see if the boxes look more or less even. So like this uh, one for the audiobook looks normal to me because this area in the top of the box is the same as the area down there. And then the, um, the whiskers are also the same length. These other two are not as normal looking to me. So this might not be a good place to actually do inference using the F distribution, but let's try it anyway. Let's use the F distribution as a distributional approximation to again, find the p-value for this same example. Remember our f value was 5.02, so we're gonna see if that's significant. And we need to find the df1 and df2. Remember the df1 was the degrees of freedom from the groups. So let me go back to my table about the music and pain relief. So the degrees of freedom for the groups was two and the one for error was 27. So let me go back and put those down. I've got two and 27. And now I'm gonna go back to stat key and I'm gonna pick theoretical distribution and I'm gonna click on the F distribution. And just like it did for the T distribution, it's gonna prompt me before I get into the um, visualization of the distribution, I have to put in my degrees of freedom and it says numerator DF and denominator DF. So for numerator, numerator DF, I'm gonna put two and for denominator DF, I'm gonna put 27 and hit okay. So here's what the theoretical distribution looks like. Pretty similar to the one that we found with randomization. 
and we're always going to use the right tail checkbox. And then I can change that default of 4.242 to my F value, which was 5.02, I think, and say OK. And now that's going to give me my P value. So here's my P value was 0.014, very similar to what we found with randomization, just a little bit different with the distributional approximation. We're still going to reject the null hypothesis. Um, we have evidence to suggest at least one mean is different. And so sometimes the last thing that will be on an ANOVA table is a p-value. So in this case, that would be the one from our F distribution, 0.014. So I've got some final thoughts here. ANOVA is the way to do inference on many means. We're going to find an F value, which is our test statistic. We're only doing hypothesis testing in this section no confidence intervals. Our null and alternative hypotheses are always that mu1 is equal to mu2 is equal to out to mu k, and at least one mean is different. Uh, you probably want to know the shortcut formulas. And you can find a p-value using either a randomization distribution or an F distribution. If you're going to use the F distribution, you need to check the conditions.